Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, let us continue our discussion on the autocorrelation and energy spectral density and we are looking at the autocorrelation of this function e to the power of, of the signal e to the power of minus a t u t and uh, this is the particular signal that we are looking at which is e to the power of minus a t u t and we have already seen that if tau is greater than or equal to 0, then r 1 1 tau equals, uh, we have seen that r 1 1 tau equals 1 over root 2 a e to the power of minus a tau. Let us now consider the scenario, consider now tau less than or equal to 0. With tau less than or equal to 0, we have e to the power of this is your e to the power of minus a this is e to the power of minus a t u t and now if the tau is less than or equal to 0, the shift is towards the left and uh, therefore, the resulting signal is going to look like this that is it is going to look this is your e to the power of minus a t minus tau u t minus tau for tau less than or equal to 0 that is the shift t equal to tau is negative. Okay. So, the time shift time shift tau is negative and now therefore, if you can see the overlap that is this portion the overlap of the two exponentials portion of overlap of e to the power of minus a t u t e to the power of minus a t time t minus tau is for t greater than or equal to 0. There is a portion where these two signals that is e to the power of minus a t u t and e to the power of minus a t minus tau u t minus tau uh, overlap is for all t greater than or equal to 0. That is the portion where this the period that is the, uh, the portion where the overlap implying the portion where uh, the product of both these signals is non-zero. Therefore, r 1 1 tau remember our definition is r 1 1 tau again minus infinity to infinity x t x t minus tau d tau sorry d t and this is equal to minus infinity to infinity e to the power of minus a t u t e to the power of minus a t t minus tau u t minus tau d t. This is non-zero only for t greater than product is non-zero only for t greater than equal to 0. So, therefore, this is equal to 0 to infinity e to the power of minus a t e to the power of minus a uh, e to the power of minus a t minus tau d t 
which is equal to again e to the power of a tau comes out common. So, this is this does not depend on t. So, this comes out of the integral this is integral 0 to infinity e to the power of minus 2 a t d t which is equal to e to the power of a tau 1 over minus 2 a e to the power of minus 2 a t evaluated between the limit 0 to infinity equals e to the power of a tau times 0 minus 1 divided by minus 2 a equals 1 over 2 a e to the power of a tau equals 1 over uh, this is going to be 1 over 2 a uh, 1 over 2 a I am sorry this has to be e to the power of minus a e to the power of a tau. So, this has to be e to the power of a tau. Okay. So, this is you can see r 1 1 tau if so, this is basically your r 1 1 tau. So, if tau less than or equal to 0 or tau less than 0 r 1 1 tau equals 1 over 2 a e to the power of a tau. Okay. So, therefore, now we have derived r 1 1 tau corresponding to both the regions of tau that is if tau is greater than or equal to 0 it is 1 over 2 a e to the power of minus a tau if tau is less than 0 then it is 1 over 2 a e to the power of a tau. Therefore, therefore we have so we have to summarize r 1 1 tau equals 1 over 2 a e to the power of minus tau a tau if tau is greater than or equal to 0 this is 1 over 2 a e to the power of a tau if tau is less than 0 and now you can see I can combine both this. I can combine both these as r 1 1 tau equals 1 over 2 a a to the power of minus a mod of tau magnitude of tau. So, I can combine this I can combine both these as 1 over 2 a e to the power of minus a magnitude of tau that is the autocorrelation function of the signal e to the power of minus a t u t. Okay. So, this is the autocorrelation this is the autocorrelation of the signal x t equals e to the power minus a t u t and it looks as follows it is e to the power of 1 over 2 a e to the power of minus a uh, magnitude tau. So, it is basically non-zero this is non-zero and decaying exponential that is this is basically let me draw it with the same color this is basically uh, decaying exponential on both axis that is this is your e to the power of minus a tau minus a magnitude of tau 1 over 2 a. So, this is a decaying exponent. So, this is on the tau axis this is tau equal to 0. So, this is 1 over 2 a e to the power of minus a uh, magnitude of tau. So, this is a decaying exponential on both sides. decaying exponential
on positive and also the negative tau axis okay okay two sided exponential which is decaying on both the positive tau axis and also the negative tau axis so this is the autocorrelation function of e power minus a uh, at ut okay this is the autocorrelation function now let us find the energy spectral density all right so to find the energy spectral density let us first start by finding the fourier transform okay so to find the energy spectral density let us now find the let us now find the energy spectral density. So, we start by finding start by deriving the Fourier transform we have x t equals e power minus a t u t the Fourier transform x f equals integral minus infinity to infinity x t e power minus j 2 pi f t d t which is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity well e power minus a t u t is non zero only for t greater than equal to zero so this is e power minus a t e power minus j 2 pi f t d t which is integral zero to infinity e power minus a plus j 2 pi f t d t correct. Now, therefore, this integral can be evaluated as e to the power of minus a plus j 2 pi f t divided by minus a plus j 2 pi f substitute the limits 0 to infinity equals 0 minus 1 divided by minus a plus j 2 pi f equals 1 over a plus j 2 pi f and therefore, what we have is the Fourier transform x of f is 1 over a plus j. Remember, this is the Fourier transform, this is your Fourier transform of the signal. this is the Fourier transform of the signal x t. And now, the energy spectral density is given by the magnitude square of the Fourier transform. So, the E s d that is s 1 1 of f or s of s x x of f equals magnitude x x x f square all right. Here also I can denote all these autocorrelation functions by R x x of tau, this is R x x of tau rather than R 1 1 of tau, these can be denoted by R x x of tau and so on and these things can be corrected at all 
the other places that is we have here for instance Rxx of tau. Okay. And therefore, now the Fourier transform S x x of f that is magnitude x f square that is magnitude 1 over a plus that is magnitude 1 over a plus j 2 pi f square that is 1 over a square plus 4 pi square S x x of f, this is magnitude x f square and remember this is also one can also now remember that this is also the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation that is R x x tau that is what we have over here that is if you remember that S x x f that is the energy spectral density is also the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function R x x tau which is magnitude x f square. Therefore, R x x tau the Fourier transform is 1 over. So, R x x tau Fourier transform of R x x tau is S x x f which is 1 over a square plus 4 pi square f square. This is also your energy spectral density. This is also the energy Now, we have already seen that this energy spectral density characterizes the distribution of energy in the frequency domain, there is a spread of the energy in the frequency domain. So, if you plot this thing S x x of f at f equal to 0, this is 1 over a square and it looks it decays as f increases towards infinity, it decreases. So, this is at 0 it is 1 over a square and this is 1 over a square plus 4 pi square f square and this characterizes this gives the spread of the energy in the frequency domain. spread of the energy of the signal in the spread of the energy of the signal in the frequency domain. For instance, one can ask the question what is the energy of the signal between in the band minus w remember we can ask the question what is the what energy how much energy is contained in the band that is one can ask this question how much energy we would be interested in knowing how much energy of this signal right is considered in the band minus w to uh, minus w to w all right and that can be derived by integrating this energy spectral density in this frequency band so if i ask the question what is the energy energy contained in the band minus w to w that is equal to the integral minus w to w of the energy spectral density s x x of f into d of f. We can evaluate this in, in fact, so the energy in the band minus w to w this is equal to minus w to w integral of the energy spectral density that is d f 
by 1 over a square plus 4 pi square f square. Now, I am going to do some manipulations, I am going to bring the a square outside. So, this can be written as 1 over a square minus w to w d f by 1 plus f square divided by a square divided by 4 pi square. Okay, I have brought the 4 pi square into the denominator. Now, let us set or use the substitution substitute tilde f tilde equals f divided by a over 2 pi correct which implies or f is equal to f, f tilde equals f over a over 2 pi which is basically 2 pi f divided by a which implies d f tilde equals 2 pi d f by a and therefore, this integral here can now be modified with this substitution as 1 over a square the limits become minus 2 pi w over a to 2 pi w over a times d f tilde into 2 pi over a or d f tilde or d f tilde equals uh, d f equals d f tilde by 2 pi over a. So, this is into a over 2 pi by 1 plus f square divided by a square by 4 pi square is nothing but f tilde square and therefore, what I have over here is the energy contained in the band minus w to w is 1 over 2 pi a minus 2 pi w by a to 2 pi w by a d f tilde divided by 1 over f tilde square and this you can see is 1 over 2 pi a tan inverse f tilde between the limits 2 pi w by a minus minus 2 pi w by a. So, this is simply 1 over 2 pi a into 2 tan inverse 2 pi w over a which is basically 1 over pi a tan inverse 2 pi w over a. And this is a very interesting result. What is this? This is the energy contained in the band this is the very this is the energy contained energy of what energy of x t that is e to the that is the signal e to the power of minus a t u t contained in the band minus w. So, what we are now able to achieve is we, we are able to uh, we are able to compute not only what is the total energy of the signal of course, that is what we have done before right much before when we defined the energy of a signal, but we are also able to compute what is the precise amount of energy of what is the precise amount of energy of a particular signal which is concentrated in a certain band of interest that is minus w to w and that we are able to achieve because we are we are able to compute the energy spectral density of this signal and from the energy spectral density we integrate it over the frequency band of interest to derive the energy of the signal contained in that band of interest minus w to w solid. So, this is the energy again of your signal e to the power of minus a t u t in band
naturally now if I set W equal to infinity that is from minus infinity to infinity I should get the total energy of the signal. Now set let this is an interesting size set W equals infinity 1 by pi A tan inverse 2 pi W by A for W equal to infinity this becomes 1 over pi A tan inverse infinity is pi over 2. So, the pi's go away this will become 1 over 2 A and this should be the total energy and this should give us technically this should give us the total energy of the technically this should give us the total energy of the signal that is contained over contained over the entire this should technically be total energy of the this should technically be the total energy of the signal 1 over 2. Is it the total energy of the signal? Let us check our signal is x to the power of x t equals e power minus a t u t its energy is integral minus infinity to infinity x t whole square that is magnitude x t square d t this is from our definition of energy. Now remember this is in this function is non zero only for t greater than or equal to zero so this is zero to minus infinity e to the power of minus 2 a t d t which is 1 over minus 2 a e to the power of minus 2 a t evaluated between the limits 0 to infinity and therefore this is 0 minus 1 divided by minus 2 a which is 1 over 2 a and this is indeed if you can look above this is indeed if you can go above this is indeed the total energy of the signal. This is indeed the total energy of the signal this is also equal to what we have shown is basically this is also this quantity is indeed the total energy and this is also integral minus infinity to infinity s x x of f d of f. By setting w equal to infinity that is the band of interest to be from minus infinity to infinity we are integrating the energy spectral density over the entire frequency axis that is the area under the entire energy spectral that is the area under the energy spectral density over the entire frequency domain that is from minus infinity to infinity that yields the total energy of the signal. And not only that something even more interesting let us look at our autocorrelation function R x x tau. Now set tau equal to 0 remember autocorrelation function is minus infinity to infinity x of t into x conjugate t minus tau d tau. Now set tau equal to 0 in this and this becomes integral minus infinity to infinity x of t once you set tau equal to 0 x conjugate of t dt which is basically equal to magnitude x t square d t. So, r x x of 0 that is if you set tau equal to 0 r x x of 0 equals again r x x of 0 again gives us the energy of the signal. It again gives us the energy of the now 
for our signal x t equal to e to the power of minus a t u t we have shown that r x x tau equals 1 over 2 a e to the power of minus a magnitude of tau. Now, set tau equal to 0 and r x x of 0 you can once again see equals 1 over 2 a e to the power of minus a 0 e to the power of 0 which is again simply 1 over 2 a. And now, you can once again see this is also equal to that is if you go again this quantity is again you can see this quantity is once again equal to the total energy this quantity is once again equal to the total energy of the signal that is 1 over that is 1 over 2. So, again R x x tau the autocorrelation function the autocorrelation function of the signal x t evaluated at tau equal to 0 gives us the total energy of the signal that is 1 over 2. Therefore, all these things are equivalent and that is what we have shown if you go back and look at the theory you will see that all these things are equivalent and yield the total energy of the signal that is your R x x autocorrelation function evaluated at 0 equals minus infinity to infinity magnitude x t square d t which is minus infinity to infinity total area under the energy spectral density which is equal to minus infinity to infinity magnitude x f square d f from the parcels. Remember this part that is this is what is traditionally known as your Parseval's relation. Or Parseval's theorem for that matter, this is also known as Parseval's that is integral minus infinity to infinity magnitude x t square d t equals integral minus infinity to infinity magnitude x f square t f. All right. So, this completes our example of the autocorrelation function and energy spectral density where we have shown and explored several interesting things. We have considered a signal derived its autocorrelation function, derived the corresponding energy spectral density. All right. Realize that this is the distribution of the energy of the signal in the frequency domain derived the portion of energy of the signal contained in the band of interest that is minus w to w demonstrated that if w is set to infinity then it gives the total energy of the signal which in this case is 1 over 2 a that is also equal to the energy of the that is integral minus infinity to infinity magnitude x t square d t it is also equal to r x x at tau at tau equal to 0 that is r x x 0 the autocorrelation function of the signal evaluated at tau equal to 0. All right. So, this comprehensively completes the, the signal analysis and the, the spectral analysis that is a discrete Fourier series and the Fourier transform and the various properties of the Fourier transform of the signal. Thank you.